This is a work of political and social commentary. The content of this video is not meant for children under the age of 13. Parental discretion is advised. The 77th Annual Golden Globe Awards was last Sunday, and ever since the opening monologue, the name Ricky Gervais has been all over the media. Ricky is known for his love of animals and caring little for sacred cows. His monologue reflected that utter lack of regard for holy bovines. Judging by the reactions to that monologue by the folks from the corner of Hollywood and Blind, I think that it's worth some roasted opinions. Ricky was doing what's known as a bastard routine. It's a modern version of the sort of routine done by the court fool in ages past. No one is off limits, and the fool provides an important function in court by criticizing others, including the monarch. While the fool's position was precarious and some lost their lives for their temerity, the court fool was a trusted advisor in most cases because he provided both comic relief and an unvarnished assessment of policies. He wasn't merely expected to criticize, the fool was expected to ridicule anything which was ridiculous, reflecting the vox populi to the court. That's what Ricky did for Hollywood in his monologue. He ridiculed cancel culture, the college entrance bribery scandal, the Weinstein sex scandal, the ridiculous insistence of the Hollywood foreign press that movies must be more diverse when they nominate an incredibly non-diverse list for the Golden Globes, the suspicious death of Jeffrey Epstein, pedophilia, the extraordinary lack of creativity in movie making in Hollywood, and the unrealistic focus on physical appearance in modern movie making. He even took a poke at Greta Thunberg, which I expect will result in her changing her profile description on Twitter. But he saved the best for last. He skewered Hollywood for their complete lack of self-awareness and their woke culture. He advised the winners to avoid politics in their speeches because they know nothing of real life telling them to accept their award, thank their agent, thank their god, and F off. For those few who don't understand British slang, Ricky meant for them to shut up and go sit back down. The only thing that Ricky didn't mention was Hollywood accounting. Now, I would love to show clips of this video instead of random pictures of Ricky, but Dick Clark Productions is claiming the videos of anyone who features clips, even for the purposes of criticism and satire. I'd love to throw caution to the wind and remind DCP of Flint vs. Ohio, but I don't have the time or money to fight DCP in the California courts. I also believe that DCP would go after YouTube instead of the individual creators, as commentary on Ricky's speech is showing up in my notifications, but any link which features clips is getting copyright claimed. I watched the speech and read the transcript, and I laughed my ass off. I also expected that the same lack of self-awareness and woke culture would prompt a huge backlash. And I was right. Good God was I right. But something else also happened which I didn't suspect would happen, but for which I hoped. Fewer awardees made woke speeches and politicized the awards ceremony. Plenty of people on social media went nuts about the speech, but a lot more people who lived their lives off of social media laughed and nodded. Here's what Hollywood really missed in this speech. The people who buy movie tickets are tired of an unending procession of hypocritical acceptance speeches. They don't want poorly written sequels, and they're tired of remakes. They want Hollywood to get back to the basics of making good movies, and for actors to spend less time making political statements and more time making shows worth watching. They want jokes to be treated as jokes. I can illustrate that point using the very monologue of which I speak. If you spent your time doing this during the speech, then you understand that these are jokes. Funny if a bit pointed, but jokes nonetheless. If you looked more like this, well, I get it. You probably realize that these are jokes, but they aren't really your kind of jokes. And hearing them probably shocked you. If, however, this was your reaction, maybe you should stop and think about your life choices like Patricia Arquette, who used her speech to plead for votes against Trump, or Michelle Williams, who credited her success to abortion, or Joaquin Phoenix, who despite being a really great actor, used his speech to cuss himself out. 
No, I'm not talking about Kate McKinnon thanking Ellen DeGeneres for fostering acceptance. No, I'm not talking about Tom Hanks exhorting actors to be more professional. And no, I'm not talking about highlighting the Australian bushfires, to which, at the very least, Chris Hemsworth and Sir Elton John responded by donating a million dollars each to disaster relief. Those aren't political statements. They are personal statements and personal actions. And who knows? Maybe Ricky's jokes about Hollywood's hypocrisy prompted them to stop talking and start doing something. Gervais is one of a growing group of comedians who are taking back humor from the humorless, and I approve. It's our loss that he won't be back again with his bastard routine to strip the blinders off next year.